about it, I thought was really weird and super interesting to kind of read from afar. Um, but also kind of harrowing for the people involved. Well, not kind of, very harrowing. It's this whole thing going on with this submarine at the moment. This epically named submarine called the titanic that's been missing now for a few days and essentially the people inside it have only as a headline says 40 hours of air left so if they're not found before thursday then most likely everybody inside is going to perish and i think there's like five people inside there right so let me just get like a brief little kind of overview of what's happened for you here the summary coach of bbc says as follows the tourist submar the, the tourist submersible that got missing with five people on board has less than 30 hours of air left according to authorities estimates contact with a small sub was lost on sunday more than halfway into its dive to the titanic wreck site off the coast of newfoundland in canada British Pakistani businessman um, Shadzada Dawood and his son Suleiman are on board, along with British businessman and explorer Hamish Harding. Paul Henry Nagalit, the former French Navy diver who's explored the Titanic before, is also on the vessel, as is Stockton Rush, um, the chief executive of Ocean Gate, the firm behind the dive. Um, international planes and ships have joined the urgent search mission which has been called very complex by the u.s coast guard so these guys are legitimately at you know somewhere down in the depths of the ocean um, they went there on an exploration trip it's some sort of trip that rich people do where they want to go next to the site of the actual titanic ship and explore it and then come back up again um, which is really 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 bizarre when you look at the actual submarine itself it does it's not that impressive it basically just looks like a tube um with you know barely some places in it that you can kind of see through i'm assuming maybe with some cameras that kind of project it on the inside and that's the one thing that kind of just got me because it clearly looks like something that would cost a little bit of money um as kind of uh basic and a slapdash as this little gizmo looks i'm sure it's quite expensive to get inside this ocean gate titan submarine thing but the one thing that kind of firstly brought out to me was the fact that it doesn't really look like a submarine and then i checked online and stuff and i think the actual definition of a submarine is having something that hasn't it has to have an engine in it it has to be able to kind of you know um go backwards and forwards up and down whereas i think this submergible thing basically can go down and up essentially like a it's it's like a cylindrical lift in that respect so it's not technically a submarine from what i've been reading up so far anyway but i'm just thinking overall if i'm a billionaire or even if i've got you know somewhere in the high millions surely there's got to be other things in your life that will bring you a little bit more of a buzz that will get you off that will make you feel like you've got your money's worth that's something that's a unique experience that you can have only with that kind of money because i honestly feel like this experience doesn't seem like it's worth it um the, you know the juice is definitely not worth the squeeze to be inside this capsule not even the fact of the how dangerous it is it's more so the experience doesn't look that great from what i can see so far just looking at the actual cylinder itself it doesn't look that interesting of a time to be inside to make all that stuff worth it it kind of reminds me a little bit of the um of the jeff bezos uh powered what you call it um spaceship i think it's called that like blue origin or something where it can only go up into orbit and you have a small time of, of weightlessness where you can kind of run around and stuff and do your thing and come back down again i don't necessarily think that's worth the squeeze because if i'm not able to go you know around orbit or something or or just go a little bit into space for a while and then come back down the ability just to go up and down again and imagine if something malfunctions and you end up perishing just just for the mere sake of being able to be weightless for like a minute or two it doesn't seem that to be the most uh, worthwhile thing but god almighty man prayers go out to everybody that's stuck in that submarine really i'm hoping they're able to kind of find these people um within the next 30 hours or so um the update here so far courtesy of bbc it says for of the third day of rescue u.s coast guard commanders continue to lead the complex search operation over an area of ocean larger than the state of connecticut flipping hell um, rescue efforts um, from Canada Navy, Air Force and Coast Guard as well as the New York Air National Guard are assisting. A French research vessel has also joined the search. Um, the Titan submersible is thought to be approximately 900 miles east and 400 miles south of Newfoundland, capital St. John's. Um, the contact was lost with the, shop, with the sub um, one hour and 45 minutes into its two hour and a half dive down the Atlantic wreck site. So just before it's about to come up, actually, that's actually even more harrowing. 
it lost contact within the one hour of 45 minutes oh sorry yeah it lost contact with the sub one hour and 45 minutes into its two hour dive so it only had 15 minutes only had 15 minutes left to come up and then it lost contact which is really harrowing um and then according to u.s coast guard estimates the titan has roughly 30 hours of oxygen remaining on board the really funny bit and almost tragic bit about this is that i've mentioned this before in a stream one of the sons of these people who were stuck inside a submarine posted that he went to a Blink-182 concert and the caption was like, oh, I know this is tasteless or distasteful, but my family would want me to go to this concert because they know Blink-182 is my favorite band. So as his flipping stepdad is in one of these submarines fighting for his life, um, you know, there's all these Coast Guard, um, you know, there's all these Coast Guard rescue teams from Canada, um, from France, from all over the place assisting um, with the rescue. Everybody's on red alert. He's over there listening to fucking Blink-182 and some random concert and have an absolute great time dancing away, drinking away, smiling away and just having an absolute best time ever. <laughs> which is absolutely harrowing like honestly some people's kids are just awful um we've got this article here quickly from somebody that says ocean gate fired expert who warned about the titan safety in 2018 now everybody's also coming out of the woodwork with you know with some revisionist history and stuff and armchair quarterback stuff but maybe there's some truth in this the article says a submarine expert who works at the ocean gate um the company that operates the missing sub submersible um warned of the potential safety problems in 2018 according to u.s court documents david lockridge uh, moved to scotland from washington state to work for the firm in a bbc interview that's him there right that guy lockridge in a bbc interview in 2017 he infused about the mission and said it was destined for the sea but less than a year later he warned his bosses that flaws in the titan's carbon hole might go undetected without more stringent testing and he urged the company to have an outside agency certify the vessel he said that his verbal warnings were ignored and until the until he wrote a report that was called into a meeting with several officials including ocean gate executive stockton rush who was aboard the missing submersible ocean gate responded by firing Lockridge. oh my god this guy uh raised the alarm let them know there was issues with it and instead of actually heeding his warning they fired him the company sued him for revealing confidential information and the submarine expert countersued for unfair dismissal. The lawsuit was later settled. Through his lawyer, Lockridge declined to comment today. Court documents also state that Lockridge learned that the manufacturers of the Titan forward viewpoint only certified it to a depth of 1,300 meters. The Titanic wreck lies at 3,800 meters below the surface. Jesus. So it's not even permissible to go that deep deep anyway into the ocean oh my god that is crazy and obviously a picture about who's on board you've got Suleiman and you've got the how do you say pronounce his name i think it's shahadzaz shah shahzadza 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 badawud if you're catching up with the story, here's a quick summary. Hamish Harding is 58, a British adventurer who's previously been to space multiple times and to the South Pole. Uh, British, imagine, he's been to space and he's been to the South Pole, but the most harrowing experience so far has been him trying to traverse the bottom of the ocean. That's one place I think I'm kind of agreeing with, with a lot of people who are kind of space skeptics and stuff and would much rather we kind of focus on stuff that happens on our planet instead of kind of exploring space. I wouldn't go that far because I still think space exploration is super important. But I think there should be a lot more onus, a lot more emphasis put on exploring the depths of the ocean and finding out what lies beneath because for some reason we don't. We want to go search all these other places but we don't want to go and search the depths of the ocean, find new species and just see what lies beneath anyway in general um maybe we could find a lost civilization that day you never know uh british businessman shadzab dawood a member of one of five pakistanis richest families and a supporter of two charities founded by king charles god almighty why is somebody that rich and that important going down in a submarine it looks so janky like that oh my god um his son suleiman dawood Dadu, uh, Dawood, sorry, a 19 year old student is also there, as is Paul Henry, Nagal at 77. So they're all quite old, isn't it, these people? With a 19 year old, um, 48, 58, 61. Jesus Christ. Um, Henry, sorry, Paul Henry Nagalet, a French Navy diver who's um, reportedly spent more time in a Titanic wreck than any other explorer. So they've got the people they need on board to survive. 
if there was a hiring moment where they need to kind of you know make the most of the oxygen available they've got the right people on board to kind of give people keep everyone calm but can they be found on time that's the issue stockton rush 61 the chief executive of ocean gate the firm that operates the titan is also on board so at least the person who fired that guy who raised the alarm was also on board he's actually going down with the ship so there's some you know there's some, um, I want to say justice or beauty, there's some honour in that. He's not sat somewhere in some conference room or at an IB for having a good time. And then last one here, we've got US Senator Mark Keeley or Mark Kelly, um, a former NASA astronaut and US Navy captain, has said that he feels for the families whose loved ones are aboard. It's interesting that there's a lot of people that who've worked in space and also are part of the, arm, uh, part of the Navy. I wonder what the correlation is between both. There's a lot of people that are astronauts and also worth Navy, isn't it? I see a lot of this here. Um, Ikatu said, it's a risky environment. You're operating, and he told CBS, drawing on his experience of outer space, he said, a submarine like that has similar system to a spacecraft. Okay, there we go. You've got to scrub out CO2. You've got to provide a breathable atmosphere. We've got the opposite pressure problem in space. So this is going to be challenging rescue operation with unknown outcomes. I encourage everybody that can work positively to bring these five individuals home on this in a collaborative way. Jesus Christos, mate. Absolutely wild. So, again, force and fears everybody out there. But like I said, I just think if I was a millionaire, if I was a billionaire, there'd be better things I'd be doing with my money than sitting my ass in this horrible flipping submarine and dive into the depths of the oceans to go check out the flipping wreckage of the Titanic, which you can't even go out and go and see and explore. You're just going to be checking it out through a little shitty fucking, you know, GoPro somewhere, whatever. It's just not, doesn't seem like it's worth it to me. But again, you know, what do I know when it comes to this stuff? What do I bloody know? Moving